Dear Dad, I have a little time and I figured I'd write you a letter to let you know how Jamie and I are doing. We're both out in the field right now and I won't be able to send any letters till we get back to Quezon, but writing helps take my mind off things. It rained pretty hard earlier, so the paper's kind of wet, and I don't know if you'll even be able to read this by the time I get to mail it. We found a lot of NVA in these hills. They must have been getting ready for months. If we hadn't found them now, looks like they would have swept through Quezon by the end of the year. We rolled them back to a couple of hills, but they were full of bunkers and foxholes. We hit them with artillery and dropped about a million bombs, but a lot of the bunkers couldn't be cracked. We had to go in this morning and force them out. Eventually they started pulling out, but it started raining so hard we couldn't go after them. The NVA is still out there somewhere, and Jamie and I are manning some muddy foxholes until morning when we'll head out after them again. Hopefully it'll be a quiet night since we're a bit short on ammo and it's too dark and misty to see real far. Jamie's done okay the past couple days. I think he's earned a little respect from the guys. Our new captain, Duke Dandridge, is starting to watch out for him. Dandridge isn't as friendly as Zook, but he knows what he's doing out there and we all respect him. You don't see a lot of black officers in the Marines. He reminds me a bit of you, Dad. Well, I'll write again when we get back to base. Jamie says hello. Your son, Dean. Guys I bunked with last month told me about the sounds, man. At night, on the hills, the sounds fuck with your head. Dig it. Shit. What the fuck is that? Shut your holes. It's nothing. There's movement down there. I see it too. Fuck. Negative. You two better chill. No, man. I, I, I see it. They're moving in. That ain't the mist, brothers. Sappers! You like ghosts, man! tricks with my eyes.
Where the hell have you pukes been? We've been getting the living shit pounded out of us. Oh, and we haven't been. Can it, numb nuts? One more word and I'll have you burning shit for the rest of your time in country. I want you people to take up positions in these bunkers and foxholes. Our left flank has been overrun. Reinforcements are mounting a counterattack in the morning, but we must hold this ridge line through the night. Move up. Nice work, people. Shepard, you take another man and hop on that mule. Go down the hill and attack the left flank. There's a gap in that NVA line that we can exploit if we move on it right now. I'll round up the people for the counterattack. Move out! I'll drive. Shepard's something like a good luck charm these days. See you guys later. Hey, be careful. No problem, little man. I'll watch Big Brother's ass for you.
Well done. All right, people, we got one last job to do. We gotta push up this hill and take back the positions that the NVA took from us. Flush them and frag them. Shepard, you and your squad lead the way. That was your ground to hold. Now let's get it back. I will see you men at the top of the hill. Move out. to put some guns on those bunkers. We've got to reinforce this hillside. Let's secure our wounded and dead until we can get them extracted. Show some fucking respect, you asshole! This is our friend over here! These are my men, Marine. Every damn one of them, including your friend. Your friend was incredibly brave, and his actions will be recognized. But right now, I've got to reinforce this position, so suck it up! Charlie's gonna be back, and I don't want him to catch us with our pants down. Dear Mom and Dad, I already have a couple of letters to send off to you, so I, I thought I'd write you another note to let you know Jamie and I got through the fighting safely. We got counterattacked the night we were stuck out on the hills. 
but Jamie and I managed to get back to our lines when our foxholes were overrun. By the end of the night, the NVA had overextended themselves looking for us, and we were able to roll them up and get off the hill for good. Unfortunately, Pat Hodges didn't make it. He died up there on the hill. This death really hit us all hard. I've known Pat since elementary school, and he was always nice to me. He never cared what the other white kids thought about being friends with a black kid. I keep asking myself if there was something I could have done to save him. I know deep down that there wasn't, but it's been eating away at me. Anyway, Hoss and I will be heading home in a month. We're getting transferred to the MACV compound in the city of Way, where we'll be stationed for the rest of our tour. Way hadn't been attacked at all during the war, so I think the rest of my time in country will be pretty uneventful. Captain Dandridge is being transferred there as well. Greaser and Smooth have promised to keep an eye on Jamie for me, so I wouldn't worry about him. Love, Dean. In late January 1968, the people of South Vietnam busily prepare for the traditional holiday of Tet, marking the Lunar New Year. Civilians decorate their shops and homes, and the military looks forward to a brief ceasefire, with many Arvin soldiers taking leave as the country celebrates. Communist insurgents are preparing for something different, however. North Vietnam chooses the ceasefire as the time to launch the general uprising a massive coordinated offensive targeting every major base and urban area in South Vietnam. Viet Cong guerrillas prepare and mobilize, while NVA troops infiltrate the South via the Ho Chi Minh Trail. On January 31st, over 80,000 communist troops attack hamlets, districts and cities across South Vietnam, including Saigon, and the previously untouched imperial capital of Hue. The traditional capital of Vietnam and a symbol of that country's rich cultural heritage, Hue is overrun by this Tet Offensive. Viet Cong and NVA troops pour through the streets, arresting Catholics, scholars and other enemies of the revolution who do not flee. By the 1st of February, the entire city, including the venerated Palace of Peace, is firmly in communist hands. Only the American MACV compound to the south of the Perfume River and the Arvin 1st Division headquarters to the north of the Citadel managed to hold out against the fierce NVA attacks.